Hi friends, this is Mainak Misra and welcome back to my channel. The pandemic is not over yet. So I believe you and your family members are doing absolutely great and taking care of yourselves. Today I will be discussing with you about a Bosnian film, Kuo Vadis Aida, directed by Yasmila Benic. Yasmila Benic's Kuo Vadis Aida is a heartbreaking read of the Srebrenica genocide. Under the command of the notorious general Red Komla Ridge, 8,372 Bosnian Muslim men and boys were murdered and countless women were raped by the Bosnian Serb Army of Republika Sposka, which is also known as VRS. These atrocities rendered more than 30,000 people homeless. The United Nations, NATO and the world leaders failed to save Srebrenica and its countless innocent people. A little more empathy, timely actions and humanly acts could have saved Srebrenica which was a designated United Nations safe area. Now I will discuss with you about the story of the film. On 11th July 1995, under the command of General Ratkomlaric, the Bosnian Serb Army of Republika Sposka takes control of Srebrenica. And these atrocities rendered more than 30,000 people homeless. So they take shelter in a nearby United Nations camp. But the camp is very little. It's a small camp. It cannot accommodate 30,000 people. So only a few hundred people enter the camp and the remaining people await their destiny outside the camp. Aida is an ex-school teacher and she now works as, uh, as an interpreter with the United Nations. Even though she has good connections with the higher officials of United Nations, she is able to get only her younger son, CEO, entered in the United Nations camp. She is not able to get her husband Nihad and older son Hamdiya inside the camp. So just like other people, they wait outside the camp. And the Dutch bat commander Thomas Karimans request the top officials of the United Nations for an air strike because Mlarit's army is approaching and they are killing people. But the top officials of the United Nations are on vacation, on leave. They are not available. And this increasingly makes the situation worse. Without much inhibition, Ratko Mlaric and his army come forward and start streamlining stream over Srebrenica and killing hundreds of innocent people. A negotiation begins between the Bosniaks three representatives of the Bosniaks and Red Komlaric under the supervision of United Nations. And Mlaric agrees that under UN escort, the citizens will be transported to safety. But he does not keep his promise 
and the Bosnian Muslim men and boys are separated from their family members and are transported to a different place. Ida realizes immediately that these men and boys will defini definitely be murdered. She can guess that. So she tries to save her family members, her husband and two sons, begging on her knees in front of General Franken. However, her helpless appeal is rejected and then she is extremely anxious. The men and boys are transported to a different building in a nearby town and then they are summarily executed. Years later, Aita returns to Srebrenica and then her apartment only to find out that it has been occupied by a Serb family of a former perpetrator. She goes to a building where the exhumed remains of the victims are being presented to be identified. She identifies the exhumed clothing of her sons and breaks down in tears. Now she joins again as a teacher and the film ends with her looking at her old, old family photographs and a musical performance by the school children. So this is the story, heartbreaking story. The world has witnessed violence, atrocities, wars, fights for centuries, for decades. The world has witnessed the World War I and World War II in the 20th century. And these atrocities, these wars, these fights only result in manslaughter, massacre, genocide. These do not result in anything good. These violate the basic principles of humanity. Love, peace, gentleness, happiness, compassion, kindness. These are all wiped out. And the world looks like a bleak and gloomy place. Bosnia is for all the Bosnians, for Serbs, for Croats for Bosniaks, for everybody. But Ratko Mlaric wanted to get rid of, wanted to eliminate the Bosnian Muslims from Srebrenica. And that resulted in the infamous genocide. There is no denial of the fact that even Bosniaks attacked the Serbs, but that can never be an excuse for the genocide. Even the most horrifying thing is that the, the perpetrators residing together with the victims in present Srebrenica Many of them have not been arrested and when the victims see their faces, their pains and agonies get multiplied. It is very difficult to tolerate to see their perpetrators are residing in the same place and that is going on there. 
the united nations nato and the world leaders failed big time to save sebenitsa and its countless innocent people during that time of genocide sebenitsa was a designated safe area declared by the united nations so it was the duty and responsibility of the united nations to secure safety to provide safety to the citizens of sebenitsa they should have sensed the situation on the ground with 300 soldiers it is not possible for the dutch pat commander karimons to resist the aggressive mlarich and its army it is not possible to accommodate more than 30000 people in that small camp so united nations should have understood and realized the situation on the ground even the united nations was not able to provide the escort to the bosnian men and boys when they were being transported to the building where they were slaughtered when karemans reached out to the higher authorities of the united nations they were on leave they were vacationing that time so they cannot deny the negligence and inaction that's why this film is a heartbreaking film Yasmila Beni's screenplay and direction are based on her own personal experiences. Even though it is a work of fiction, it is based on true events. This film is the reflection of Yasmila Beni's own personal memories and experiences the reflection of those agonies and pains and miseries and sufferings so we must credit yasmila banij for this heartbreaking film it is kind of a read a detailed read about the genocide yasna Durichij had the guts and courage to play the role of Ida. She herself is a Serb, so she was aware of the backlash and hatred that could come, but she did not care about all those things. she is so brilliant in the film that her portrayal of ida reminds us of the miseries of countless innocent people the handheld cinematography by christine meyer and fast and dynamic editing by yaroslaw kaminski have made this film multidimensional dynamic and look like a crime thriller Kuo Vadis Aita was selected to be screened at the 77th Venice International Film Festival and 2020 Toronto International Film Festival It was also nominated for the best international feature film at the 93rd academy awards and best film not in the english language at the 74th bafta awards so i am sure that you have already seen this film and if you have not then please see this film please uh, support my channel please like uh, please like this video if you like and put your comments down below 
if you want to if you want me to make any video for a particular film please let me know i will definitely try to do that uh, please subscribe to my subscribe to my channel press the bell icon so that you do not miss regular updates and hope you are taking care of yourselves thank you so much for watching this video thank you and bye